Gang's all here. Welcome, everybody. Hello, hello. Let's see, Lizzie, should we give it a minute before we get started? You think everybody's, they can trickle in if they're coming. Yeah. Hello. 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 Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Hello. Oh, video is not required. Don't be obligated. We're all on video so you can get to know us better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I guess we'll go ahead and get started and those that trickle in a little bit after they can catch on, I'm sure. Um, so thanks everybody for coming out tonight um, and jumping on this quick call. Hopefully you'll learn something a little bit new about the fellowship program. Um, we're here with our panelists of regional providers as well as um, a lead provider. And then me and Lizzie are both on the talent acquisition team for the partnership. I will give them all a chance to introduce themselves uh, and not say a fun fact about them um, in just a minute here. Um, so uh, let's see, we have a new class coming up here in August, which is really exciting. We've started, um, you know, the fellowship classes monthly now. Um, our fellowship has grown quite a bit in the last year, so we're really excited for that. Um, our fellowship is currently in five states, so in New York, Ohio, Michigan, Illinois, and Indiana, and then um, more recently, we have Pennsylvania and Wisconsin coming up as well. Um, we're currently on track to have about 200 fellows join us in 2022, which is really exciting because we do consider the fellows the, the, the future of well now urgent care. Um, like I said, we're excited for you to hear a little bit more about the fellowship as well as just what who well now is in general. Um, I'm going to lay the groundwork a little bit before we get started. First, I'm going to let the panel go ahead and introduce themselves, and then we'll jump right into some questions after that. A few of you submitted questions beforehand, so we're going to start off with those, and then, you know, after the um, we answer those, if you do have questions, pop them in the chat, and we'll try to get to them um, before the end of the hour. Um, all right, Lizzie, you want to go ahead and start off by introducing yourself? Sure. Hey, everybody. I'm Lizzie Munkenbeck. I guess Elizabeth, if I'm going in a formal uh, capacity. Um, so I am the, one of the talent acquisition partners working with Maggie. Um, I have been at WellNow actually just since February, but I am really, really lucky to be able to work with this awesome team. Um, definitely feels like a family. We have a good time every day, and we are excited for you to just spend some time with us, kind of get to know what we're about, uh, and that's, we're just happy to have you, welcome. <laughs> All right, Nick, you wanna go next? Yeah, hi everybody, I'm Nick Pashik. I'm one of the regional leads in the fellowship program, uh, mostly New York, but uh, as you heard, we're expanding, so I expect that to expand soon. <laughs> I've been with Well now for about four and a half years, uh, worked in emergency medicine before that, I'm a PA, and I've been with the fellowship for like three years, three and a half years, um, which is super cool to have seen it grown to where it is today. Um, I'm going to give a fun fact because I think it's fun. Um, <laughs> I grew up in a trailer park near Detroit, but I do not know Eminem, if you guys were asking, if you were wondering. This is a disappointing fact. <laughs> yes, I know. I'm sorry. Everybody's literally the next thing I say when I like, oh, I'm from a trailer park near Detroit. Hey, do you know Eminem? Definitely don't. But thank you for asking. <laughs> yeah. All right. Liz, you want to go? Her. Uh, my fun fact will not be that cool. Uh, my name is Liz uh, Benesad Mesa. I'm one of the regional leads as well. Uh, currently over what I call lovingly the well now Midwest. So Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, Illinois. But as Nick said, um, well now we're always growing. So our team will definitely grow as that continues to expand um been with well now and a company attached to well now for just shy of seven years and no i will not tell you how old i am um and i guess because it's on theme with today the fun fact going around today is that my youngest just started kindergarten this morning and is hopefully quietly upstairs for this next hour <laughs> all right martin uh, my name is martin christensen i'm a nurse practitioner uh, uh lead fellowship provider and uh 
the Ohio area. Uh, I've been with WellNow for right out of two years and in this role for a year. So I just graduated my first class. Um, all five of them signed with us and are rock stars in our area. Really probably some of our most solid providers we have um, in just that short time. Um, I guess fun fact about me, I like M&Ms. And I prefer <laughs> peanut butter variety. There we go. That was a good one. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, thank you all for that. Uh, Nick, do you want to just give a brief overview of the fellowship before we get started? Absolutely. So as you guys heard, uh, Well Now is in many states and we do have our fellowship in all of our regions at this point. Our fellowship is a fully accredited, accredited program. It is 12 months in length. It is made up of different phases. We like to call it the crawl to run model. So you're started off very much kind of like a student. And by the end, you're running that show all by yourself. Uh, we have a combination of clinical uh, as well as didactic. Didactic is uh, made up of Wednesday morning lectures. Uh, that is free category CME. You are led by your lead fellowship provider and then one of your regional leads. Our director is Dr. Berenbaum, who is also our COO. Um, we have a very supportive team in our providers and um, the whole group, as we said, well now is uh, very much focused on the fellowship. We see it as a wonderful opportunity to help new grads, as well as to help our company grow. Um, we're there to help you. It's not, a, it's not an easy program. It's a learning program. So you are busy. Uh, there's a lot to do. Uh, but by the end, as Martin said, many of our fellows are some of our top providers, both in uh, patient satisfaction and medical skills. So we're pretty proud of that. Uh, we help incorporate skills, um, evidence-based medicine, occupational medicine, time management, emotional intelligence is all part of our curriculum as well. And uh, I, I think that's a, probably a pretty good synopsis, but I don't want to answer all the questions. Then that would be a really <laughs> quick hour. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well now has been well real real quick on well now it's been around for 10 years it started off by dr john bradford he is our ceo first clinic was in big flats new york uh, within a few years he partnered with aspen dental and we are now a part of tag or the aspen group which is several branches of different medical um uh providers and it since has just kind of grown uh, through New York State, and then we got into Ohio, and, you know, we're just slowly taking over the world, well, at least the U.S. Um, that is our plan, uh, but really our mission is to provide really high quality, affordable health care to our patients and communities. We're one of the few urgent cares that take uh, Medicaid, Medicare, Fidelis, things like that. We have a really reasonable self-pay rate, and we are strong, strong believers in evidence-based medicine and continuous improvement. Okay. Awesome. Um, all right, we'll go ahead and jump into some of these questions here. And for those that joined after we had initially started, if you have any questions along the way, definitely put them in the chat and we're gonna be moder monitoring that and um, hopefully have time to answer those around the end of the hour. Um, all right, Liz, do you wanna go ahead and take our first question here? Um, how long does credentialing take for either a new or seasoned provider? So, well, for a fellow, it is a little different than our core provider, so I'll focus more on that. Um, we're really lucky, lucky that compared to hospital systems, our credentialing team can actually credential fellows pretty quick. Um, they would like to tell us to tell you a month, um, but maybe they can be pressured to do it a little faster sometimes. Uh, but the biggest key to that is the license, so that the fellows get their license first. But yes, versus the major hospital systems, we have very good turnaround. So. That is something for you guys to be aware if you're not licensed or if you haven't graduated yet, there is a backlog on that across almost every state. So expect that to take a little bit longer than usual. Um, Nick, you kind of already touched on this question a little bit, but can you just kind of go into a little bit more detail about the culture at WellNow? Oh yeah. So uh, it probably can be summed up with our values, our, which are our PULSE values, which is an acronym. So P is for patient-centered care, U is for United Teams, L is for leadership, S is for service, and E is for ethics. So I think the easiest way to describe that is we really love good human beings who want to provide really good quality patient care in a way that reflects how you want your family to be treated. 
and work with your team. That's that's pretty much our culture. Uh, you know, we strive to be one of the top um, employers out there. We, uh, you know, we use uh, Disney and Southwest as kind of examples and benchmarks of where we want to end up. Um, so it is a pretty positive and growing environment. Yeah. Um, Lizzie, this is something you or I can answer, but what is the interview process like for the fellowship program? How long until I hear if I'm selected? Do you want to go ahead and answer that one? Absolutely. So what happens first is that you will be able to speak to either myself or Maggie. We each kind of cover different regions. Um, I handle New York, Michigan, uh, when we move into Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Maggie handles pretty much the rest of the Midwest. Um, so we'll have a quick call with you, usually about 20 minutes, just, you know, conversational. We kind of want to get to know what you're interested in, why you're thinking about our fellowship program, um, and just kind of give you the basic overview of what to expect in terms of the fellowship as a whole, as well as the interview process. Um, and then from there, we'll schedule you to meet with uh, either one or two of our lead fellowship providers, and that's done virtually. Uh, so you'll be on a quick Zoom, usually about anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. Um, and that's very, you know, conversational, some behavioral questions. But like I said, they want to get to know who you are, what you're interested in. Uh, Dr. B, our fellowship director, always says, you know, you can teach anyone medicine, but you can't really teach them the compassion, the empathy, uh, the engagement. So we just really want to get a good feeling for who you guys are. Um, and then from there, you know, uh, after you meet with them, we, uh, the, the team usually meets on a weekly basis to discuss the candidates that have uh, been interviewed for the week. And then you'll hear from Maggie or I usually within a week after just to, you know, uh, talk about next steps. So once we decide to send you over an offer, um, you know, we'll send out a contract and everything moves pretty quick once you sign on. Uh, like Liz said, our credentialing team is incredible. They move really quickly. So um, the whole process in general is pretty swift. Uh, please note, though, that certain uh, times of the year are a lot busier than others, just in terms of when classes graduate. So if we're moving a little slower, it's usually because it's uh, anywhere August through October <laughs> uh, when everyone's graduating. But yeah, we have a pretty quick turnaround time and we try to be on top of, you know, responses and whatnot. But um, we love talking to you guys and we're always, you know, getting back to you is our top priority. Yeah, yeah definitely. All right, uh, kind of along the same lines there as far as requirements go, Liz, um, do you have to have the appropriate state license to apply or can you obtain one after acceptance to the fellowship? Well, we certainly have people sometimes apply who are in the licensure process. Uh, mm -hmm. Like Lizzie just pointed out, our interview offer process actually does move pretty quickly and we cannot let people start without the license. So um, if you don't want to wait, it's best if you have, or at least you gotta uh, wanna be going in that process. Otherwise um, we may still make you an offer, but you'd have to be prepared to wait until we have that. We can't let people start without their license. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, Nick, uh, Martin, I'm getting to you, so just hold on. <laughs> um, can you tell us when the program starts and then what locations are available right now? Absolutely. So our program, as um, Maggie kind of mentioned, we recently made a change to have a monthly orientation opportunity. Uh, we did this for a couple of reasons. Um, one being um, everybody, especially our nurse practitioner friends, they kind of graduated at all different times. And this gives them an opportunity to have a smaller gap between school and employment, um, as well as um, our needs and our openings, are they vary from month to month. So that kind of was able to hit those two main points. Our fellowship literally can be anywhere that we need it to be. Uh, we are capable of setting that up uh, at any location. Our main hubs are where our sites are very concentrated. Um, the one caveat though is <laughs> if we ever become fully staffed in any region, which if you guys have been in healthcare at any point, is kind of a laughable thing. Uh, but if we ever become uh, fully staffed at any point, the area that you do your fellowship may not be where we offer you a position in the long run. But realistically, we're very flexible on our fellowship locations, um, as well as um, job opportunities in the long run. Yeah, awesome. All right, Martin. Um, during the year of the fellowship, are candidates allotted any days off or time off? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 
as a fellow, you're uh, you know, a full-time employee, you get PTO benefits just like everybody else at Walnut. And um, as far as just routine days off, uh, our schedules come out monthly. And we allow five days a month that we call kind of your golden day. So you're allowed to request off without using PTO. So if you have a random doctor's appointment you know about or a kid play you need to get to or what have it or what have you, um, there's certainly flexibility built into our schedule with that. Um, and, um, and then, yeah, uh, generally throughout the fellowship, especially in the earlier phases, uh, the schedule is really pretty flexible as long as the accommodation is reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. Um, this is a question that I can answer. Um, would the pay be weekly, biweekly, or monthly? We do pay on a biweekly base. Um, all right. Uh, Liz, will the candidates acquire any certification as a result of being a fellow? Yep. So first, the one of the most important one is that when you're done, you get a big, pretty certificate saying that not only did you complete a fellowship, but you completed an accredited urgent care fellowship, which is certainly not as common. Um, all of our fellows, of course, get DOT certified as well, which well now pays for that. Um, and then in New York and other states, they don't require specific certification. In New York, you get workers ah. certified as well. Uh, but in all of our states, people are trained and you would come out with a very adequate training in workers comp in every state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. All right, uh, and then can you tell us real quick, what is the policy? Uh, this question says, well, I have to work holidays and weekends. You said me, right? Uh, well, either one of you, Nick or Liz, whoever. Oh. <laughs> <Pretty easy. laughs> uh, yes, uh, so we, get, we are open every day of the year as uh, part of our access to the community. Um, we do have alter hours for some holidays, but uh, yes, as part of the fellowship, you will be doing some weekends for sure. Every other weekend is a good benchmark. Um, we take turns on holidays. As a fellow, typically you do those holidays more in the later phases. Um, so if you start in December, you're probably free through those holidays. Um, uh, but that's kind of how that works out. Uh, we split it up between all the staff members. So everybody does the same thing. Um, this one says, how much is the salary? I'll go ahead and answer that one. It depends on the state and region that you're in. It does range between about 75,000 to 85,000. Uh, we do offer, you know, like Martin was telling us that paid time off as well as health and vision insurance and also free C CME. All right, um, let's see here, Liz, can I work somewhere else during the fellowship program? Simple answer is no. Um, <laughs> our fellowship, like Nick said earlier, is not easy. Um, it's definitely a lot of work. You learn a lot, but it's a lot of work. And so uh, fellows cannot truly, it's a full-time job and then some, and right, get homework and we have our didactics. So no fellows, um, in order for them to succeed, uh, we don't allow outside positions during the fellowship. And then kind of along those same lines, Nick, um, would I have to sign a non-compete? We currently don't require a non-compete clause for our fellows. Yeah, perfect. All right. Um, are they eligible for monthly bonuses? No. So our fellowship um, is a true salaried employee. Uh, that is not available for bonuses. Now, in the later shifts, um, if we do have a need, uh, people get sick, things happen. If there's an opening in the clinic, you guys are able to pick up the shift for a little extra money, yeah. assuming you're in good standing with the program. All right, Martin, th these are going to be for you. I'm going to kind of combine two of these questions. Uh, is there room for advancement at Well Now? And in addition to that, is there a time commitment past the fellowship program? Uh, so as far as time commitment beyond the fellowship, it's 12 months. Uh, so there isn't a commitment beyond that. Um, you know, ideally in that, you know, month 10-ish range, we're having you know, discussions with um, our fellows regarding coming on full time uh, after the fellowship, uh, remaining as a core provider, you know, discussing contracts, things like that. Um, as far as advancement at Well Now, uh, yeah, there's lots of room. I think that's one of the most exciting parts about Well Now as an APP. Um, you know, certainly having been at a larger hospital system before I came to Well Now, um, I didn't see a lot of opportunity for advancements for APPs there. Whereas um, here at Well Now, 
whether it's you know growth into the fellowship um, in a leadership role or leadership in the clinics, or even we have multi-site managers, regional operations managers, and, and beyond that, um, many of those are um, clinical providers that hold those roles. So if uh, leadership is something you're interested in, well, now is a great company to, um, to grow. Yeah, definitely. All right, Liz, uh, is there CME offered to fellowship providers? What does well now cover for fellowship hires? It's a good question. I chuckle because you'll have more CME than you know what to do with. <laughs> so um, I will go down the list. So like Nick said before, uh, we have weekly meetings and you get category CME uh, for attending those weekly didactic, which you're required to attend anyways, right? Um, we have access to, so the fellows have access to two major online systems. One's called Med Mastery and the other is called Core Content of Urgent Care Medicine. Uh, a part of the homework for the fellowship is assigning, you know, many different modules and lectures and stuff in there, which you get category uh, one CME as well. There's more in there that the fellows, if they're really feeling ambitious, could access to, but we go through, especially core content, quite a bit of it throughout the year. Our fellows have access to urgent care reps, uh, which is more category one CME. And our uh, fellows also have access, as do all of our providers, to up to date as well. Um, I feel like, am I missing anything, Martin, Nick? We have a lot of CME. <laughs> we have CME to store for years. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right, Nick. Um, is there a lot of opportunity for hands on learning, such as doing our own procedures, suturing, splinting, incisions, and drainage, et cetera? Yes, so uh, we actually have a full day during orientation where we practice those things. And you guys will be given an opportunity to come back to another skills day at, at your discretion um, covered by us. Uh, so you can have more practice. Um, on top of that, while you're in clinic, there's lots of opportunities to go through procedures. We get lacerations, INDs, fractures, sprains, pelvic exams, foreign body, I don't know, many other things that you never know what's going to come in. Uh, so there's lots of opportunity to learn those skills and to get really, really good at those skills. Yeah. All right. And this next question is for Martin. Um, and I've seen, I think it come up in the chat a few times, but how many hours are fellows required to work and what is the schedule looking like for that? Yeah. So um, the schedule, are, so your contract will work 160 hours a month. Uh, depending on what phase you are, that, that's always broken down both between the clinical and the didactic piece. Uh, depending on what phase, you have a little bit less clinical hours in the uh, early phases, and then that increases over time. Um, essentially, you have a little bit more in the way of homework type things to do um, when you're first starting to get DOT certified, what comp certified, things like that. Um, so in the latter phases, the clinical time comes out to be about 144 hours a month, and that's broken up. We, we, you know, most of our clinics, um, you know, the preponderance of them are 12-hour shifts, but we certainly have eight-hour shifts, 10-hour shifts sprinkled in uh, based on clinic needs, staffing, volumes, things like that. Okay. Um, and then this next question, me or Lizzie can answer. I'll go ahead and answer this one. Um, are we eligible for benefits slash health insurance as part of the one-year program? I think we touched on this briefly before, but you are offered the same benefits as a full-time employee um, at WellNow. Um, they, you would be eligible for, eligible for health insurance the first of the month following 30 days of employment. Most of our classes start on the fourth Monday of the month. So that really just puts you at a one month of waiting for those benefits. All right, uh, Liz, can you tell us what the expectation is for a, an NP or a PA joining us? Um, sure, absolutely. Um, I'm, hold on, I'm totally fine. Sorry, I caught you off guard on that one. You did catch me off guard, but I don't think until later. Um, so, I mean, the expectation for our fellows is the same as any of our core providers, uh, that we present ourselves professionally, uh, in that over time, we'll learn to uh, see patients efficiently, but big, like Nick said earlier, we can't emphasize enough how big evidence-based medicine is. Um, but I think one thing that makes well now unique as an urgent care with that expectation is we think we can really balance that amazing customer service patient experience with practicing uh, evidence-based medicine as well. 
So all that participate in the fellowship are expected to come to didactic, be on camera, show up to clinic, be on time, complete assignments. Again, overall, just be your professional selves. Well, that was a great answer for me catching you off guard. So perfect. <laughs> um, all right, Nick, can you tell us a little bit about how does WellNow value diversity? What steps have been taken to ensure WellNow is diverse? Uh, absolutely. So um, WellNow is a pretty diverse company, always working on diversity because I think there's always room for improvement on that. Um, we are a very non-discriminatory company. Uh, we don't discriminate race, religion, like the, those typical stuff. Uh, very LGBT positive for um, that community. And um, they, you know, education, basically. We, we have an annual education for diversity on our online module, as well as any type of hostile or discrimination is not tolerated at all. Yeah, perfect. Um, all right, I think that Lizzie may have touched on this question already. Um, so I'll go ahead and let you just clarify it. But how long until I hear that I am selected for the program? Absolutely. So what we try to do is once we get you on our schedule uh, to meet with our lead fellowship providers, um, you know, we touch base with them uh, on a weekly basis just to see who they've met, had the opportunity to meet with. Um, and who we're gonna extend offers to. So you'll usually hear from us within a few days um, of hearing, of meeting with our lead fellowship providers. So basically I'd say within a week, you'll know exactly where you stand. Yeah. Uh, and then Martin, um, what do I wear to work as a fellowship provider? You wear our beautiful galaxy blue scrubs. Um, <laughs> those are provided for you uh, with your name embroidered on them that kind of thing. Um, we get you a lab coat as well. Uh, at 90 days, every WellNow employee gets a pretty sweet little WellNow kind of track jacket, fleece kind of thing. Um, so that's what you get. And then you work here long enough, you get cool swag like this. You know, <laughs> Nick's got one on too. Um, yeah. So there's lots of WellNow swag running around the uh, offices as well over time. I am gonna correct you a little bit, Martin, is that we have stepped away from the white coats for a couple of reasons. One, they are on massive back order, and two, most people don't wear them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> supply chain, it's always a supply chain. <laughs> it was pretty bad though. I think I had one fellow like six months before theirs came in. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I've never worn mine once. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly. I have mine at home hung up in the closet for um, telemedicine, but I can't even do telemedicine anymore because I live in Ontario and apparently it's a law. Um, so it just hangs out. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right, Liz. Mm -hmm. I have not applied for my DEA license yet. Is that something I should aim to have done before the start of the fellowship if selected? Yes. So um, this is something we've learned ourselves as we expanded to uh, this, how easy this is and how it can affect your license can differ a little bit from state to state. Uh, yes, we do like uh, fellows to have their DEA before they start. It really doesn't take, it's not like the licensing process. It doesn't take quite as long. So as soon as you have your license, we encourage you to apply. Um, and we do know that in states like Indiana and Illinois, uh, that often you can't apply for that last piece of your license for the controlled substance until um, you have that. So yes, please apply as soon as possible. We have let people start without it, but again, license, license, license. You can't start without that. <laughs> That's for you, Lizzie. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, I love Nick. the state board so much. <laughs> Does well now require the COVID-19 vaccine? We do not. We do not require the vaccine. Uh, we still follow, obviously, all uh, protocols and 95s, and we have all of the PPE available. All right, Liz, I know that this has kind of been touched on um, with some other questions that were submitted, um, but kind of just in general, what, what will I learn as a fellow provider at WellNow? Um, a well, lot, but learn. yes, I would love to be more specific. <laughs> so um, we've mentioned multiple times now that weekly education, right? Um, but so we follow a system-based approach, right? Similar to even some schools and some med schools. So each month has a different theme, like July was ortho slash trauma. And then um, one of our many different education things we refer to, we have a textbook of urgent care medicine 
you join our fellowship, you will be able to say, I read this entire textbook in the last year. Um, in addition to other modalities, we have a wound care um, as well. So again, very try to do a very broad encompassing medical knowledge. And then like Nick said as well, also really nailing home that procedural uh, skill as well. All right, Nick, uh, will we be working with multiple providers? Are we assigned to a specific person to follow during the program? So your person that you'll follow down the program is actually your lead fellowship provider. Um, in terms of our mentors or faculty, no, we have you work with a variety of different pro providers in a variety of different locations for a couple of reasons. Um, one, at this point in your guys' careers, you know there's something to learn from everybody and everybody has a different style. And it's important to experience those styles to help develop your own style. On top of that, our um, clinics have personalities. And so one clinic might be very pediatric heavy or one might be Ahmed or one might just be the STI clinic for the region. And all of those are very important to experience. And we have you rotate through those to get the variety of, of uh, the, that healthcare experience. I'm using that from now on, by the way. They have different personalities. I like that. They 100% have personalities. Personality. I'm sure Martin and Liz would say that. You know, going in, you're like, I know what's going to happen today. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Liz, are providers expected to see a certain amount of patients per shift? And would this apply to fellowship participants? Um, I don't know. I wouldn't phrase it as uh, patients per shift. But um, our core providers are definitely comfortable seeing a certain amount of patients per hour. And for our fellowship, um, I love Nick's, we refer to it as a crawl to run model. And so we do have goals for our fellows at each phase. But so we start you low, very low at like one to one and a half patients per hour. And then we're going to progress you through there um, and get you comfortable seeing um, up to even four patients per hour by the time. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, we're getting kind of close to the end of our questions that were submitted beforehand. And I know Lizzie's doing a good job of moderating the chat, but um, if it's not answered, we'll definitely try to get to it in the last little bit of time we have. Um, but let's go ahead and finish up these these last few that were submitted before. Can so, I put in for one second? I'm sorry, sure. I, this sure. keeps coming up and I think it's a good thing to touch on. Can you guys describe, I don't know if Nick, Liz, Martin, anyone who wants to take it, um, tell them kind of about our hub and spoke model, kind of um, what the travel looks like for the fellowship program. You know, will they be in one site? Will they be in multiple sites? I think uh, that's kind of a question that Maggie and I get a lot. So I think that's a good thing for everybody to know. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm talking, so I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, we have what we call a hub and spoke is we look at our regions uh, and we say, okay, in in North Buffalo, uh, you know, Amherst, Harlem Road, Sheridan, Dent Tower, that's kind of our central site. And then we look at the sites around that and that's kind of your region, okay? Um, we do expect about 50 minutes of travel possible uh, to get into and from a site. Now we take your geography into consideration, we make our schedules um, and we do our very best to make it obviously very reasonable for you guys. Uh, nobody wants to spend two hours a day in the car, we understand that. Uh, but that's kind of the fair area that you might be assigned. Um, so we have lots of hub and spokes that we've created for each region. We're also constantly updating them because we add sites. So before we just had Albany and now we're kind of breaking that off into North Albany and South Albany uh, because there's, and I used to live in Albany, there's a huge difference between Saratoga and, you know, Lansingburg. Like it's pretty far. So... <laughs> Uh, or Western Ave. So we kind of, uh, we're, we're kind of breaking that off a little bit and uh, making that a little bit easier for you guys. Uh, and then kind of like I said, you guys are at different sites because of the personalities. Yeah. <laughs> I know well, I've seen at least one name um, from Chicago in here. So mm -hmm. I will throw out that uh, we, we are aware that, uh, note Nick said 50 minutes not mm -hmm. miles, so we understand state geography is very different. You don't want to come out to Ohio where Martin and I live. You can get far fast <laughs> for any of you who live in Ohio. So, I mean, it's very open. But so Chicago, we will likely have the plan currently is, uh, as we expand that is to have multiple hubs. Mm -hmm. Okay, So we are, we understand. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, all right, well, that kind of answered one of the last questions we had here. The other question is, I think we've actually already talked about this, is what happens once I graduate the program? Will I be offered a full-time position? Uh, Liz, do you just want to reiterate that real quick, that process? Sure. Um, so like Martin said before, we do not guarantee that our fellows are offered a position. However, uh, a large majority uh, do stay on with us. Uh, like Martin said, at about around the 10 month range, we want to start to have that conversation with our fellows. Um, like he said, all of his signs. Um, but Nick makes a great call out too, that uh, if you're an excellent candidate, even if an area is full, uh, maybe we offer you in a city nearby, um, or I know, I don't want to call any names, case, no people, one of our recent fellow graduates asked to be a traveler. We have something called internal travelers. He is an excellent fellow. So he actually became a traveler within the state for us. So there's lots of opportunities um, for our great candidates when they graduate. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. All right, Liz, well, that's all. I was, I was gonna ask Liz if we, I, I'm gonna torture her for a minute, but we're gonna test you on your DeNovo sites because uh, Logan was asking <laughs> me about <laughs> if we know a timeline about Martin still in Indiana. Uh, I said, I don't know off the top of my head, Liz might know, but if not, we'll look into it. <laughs> I. I, I don't, well, especially with one like that, I, uh, we can't always share that information in the next yeah. year. Like, really, we're not, like, it's we're not coming. It's that. coming. It's yeah. coming. Yes. It's on the map. It's on the map for sure. Um, but yes, I do uh, have access to exactly, but I don't know if I'm allowed to share that. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that Com does have a locations map and there are some, uh, noted that are coming in the future. And those are usually pretty well buttoned up with contracts and stuff in terms of location and builds and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so that was all of our pre um, questions that we had submitted. We'll go ahead and open it up to the chat. I know Lizzie, you probably got a couple um, that you were gonna wanna ask the panel if they knew. I, I'll go ahead and answer this one. Um, is there a location in Georgia, specifically the Atlanta area? Unfortunately, not at this time. We're not in Georgia. But we, we keep trying to get them to move south or at least west and couple and like skip a couple time zones uh, just to uh, get out on that west coast. But here we are in Wisconsin. I got groups on the uh, Las Vegas location when it opens. That's uh, <laughs> The uh, San Francisco or Los Angeles one, I would like to put my hat in the ring for oh. that. Maggie will go Arizona. Those don't exist, you guys. We're just kidding. <laughs> I will go Arizona. Yes. Um, All right, go Lindsay, with, what else you got in that chat for us? Let's see. Uh, this is a general PA question. How long after you take the pants do you get your license number? That depends on your state yeah. and how lucky you are, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, it, it takes a minute. You got to apply through your state and... Um, uh, Indiana is uh, brutal right now. Um, where else is having trouble? New oh, York State's behind. I guess one. Of, this one is a specific state. I'm scrolling through the chat my, myself. So it's mm -hmm. Michigan. So your pants, I see when you said you're doing it, what now, Nick? They're down to, Nick and I both pace. A couple weeks. It's much, we're going to sound old. It's much faster than when we were in school. <laughs> Just to sound yeah. old. Um, well, first of all, don't throw <laughs> me under that age the bus. inside info right here for Illinois. Four to six weeks at least. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Michigan for PAs, um, it, it varies, but it could be, um, as, especially if you're in the state, it could be as little as four, but it could take like eight to 10. It, it depends yeah. um, on the time of year. Mm -hmm. And it depends on how good you are getting what they need. It's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, here's uh, another one. How heavy is the didactic work to complete outside the classroom uh, in terms of assignments, studying for exams, things of that nature? Um, so it varies week to week. Um, I mean, I would say the average week is at least a couple, three hours, realistically. Um, you know, we have usually a chapter or two out of our textbook to read. Our textbook is real user friendly. It's really just the nuts and bolts related to urgent care medicine. So it's not, uh, it's not like a, um, you know, school text, I guess. Um, and then there's usually a couple of, um, <clears throat> online modules to complete that take anywhere from, you know, a half hour some weeks to maybe an hour or two uh, on, a, on a longer week. Um, but like I said, you do have the, the schedule far in advance. So for some of those heavier weeks where we do like our EKG and radiology modules, uh, those are things that I always encourage my fellows to kind of be 
taken little bites of over a period of time, not just be waiting until the week that we're going to discuss them. Um, but it's pretty manageable if you stay on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. Wait until Tuesday night for Wednesday morning is never a good call. I think we yeah, learned that back that's in high brutal. school. You don't learn anything and it's no fun. Don't do it that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, this is a good one. I think I can answer too. Um, when does the fellowship begin? Is there a hard start date that all the fellows start on? So I know we had kind of touched on it earlier. Um, we are now starting on a monthly basis. We have our classes starting on the fourth Monday of each month, which is uh, to sync up with our provider training. Uh, and then as you guys get started, uh, the first four days are going to be your orientation days, which are going to be part virtual, part in-person skills days. But that's something we can kind of walk you through. Uh, uh, sorry, Lizzie, our fellow orientation is all in person. Oh, it's all in person now. It's oh, all in person. Sorry, everything's always changing, keeping me on my toes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> are there final exams for the uh, fellowship? Sure is. Yeah. <laughs> there's a uh, there's a pretest that we just do for fun, uh, mostly just to scare you because it's very hard. Uh, but no, it gives you an idea of what we're looking for. And then uh, there's the final test that you must pass at the end. If you don't pass, it's OK. You have an opportunity to retake another one. And you also have a paper to do a research project that is uh, basically patient presentation wrapped into some evidence based medicine. Um, and then throughout the program, um, you have your homework, but you'll have various presentations you'll need to present at times as well. Yeah, awesome. All right, can you guys, uh, another question we've got, Julie, can you repeat how many patients we're expected to see in the beginning and how many we are expected to see upon completing the fellowship uh, in an hourly time slot? So I guess the crawl, cruise, walk and run each number of patients. Oh. <laughs> I'll restate it and then Nick and Martin can certainly add if they think any caveats should be played. So um, our fellows start at about one patient per hour um, and then by the end our core providers fellows uh, we get them up to a pace of about four patients per hour. Um, sometimes people get really fixated on numbers and so I remind people that this is an average. Um, Martin and I both in Ohio have historically worked in a clinic where we might sometimes work a, a, like alone a lot. Um, if I have a laceration coming in that hour, I can do it reasonably quickly, but I'm not going to see four patients in that hour. That's just not realistic. And we understand that. Um, but in, again, in general, average, your average urgent care patient, uh, just wait. It is very, very possible. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about like what each phase kind of means, but essentially you get more autonomy. Uh, with each phase as to why you're able to see, um, you know, kind of by yourself um, with with always having that core provider still as an available resource. And then um, eventually in, when you're in phase four, you may very well be even working by yourself. But um, so, yeah, you, you're the numbers take care of themselves for most people. Um, but the good news is, is you get a lot of feedback from us. We have at minimum a monthly evaluation with each fellow, give them all their you know, core metrics so they know where they're at, where we'd like them to be. Um, there should never be a time where you don't feel like you know where you're at as far as standing in the program at any point. Good clarification, Martin. Uh, are there RVUs for core providers? So I imagine that is related to compensation. Uh, our compensation model, even for the core providers, is not RVU related. Um, you know, they're, they're paid hourly sort of salaried as well, but then are eligible for um, for bonuses based on productivity. It's not looked at really in a um, RBU related basis. Um, that's always subject to change, um, but it's more about patients per hour, um, your net promoter score, kind of uh, patient satisfaction scores, things like that, that goes into how our core providers are bonused. Mm -hmm. Lizzie, did you see any more in there? Yeah, I got you. <laughs> uh, is there a schedule somewhere that outlines the coursework with an exam schedule and a general outline of what the year will look like? So we have that. It is on our internal um, websites. Uh, we have something called uh, The Beat. Um, it's part of our accreditation. We have that all listed for you guys when you come in. But um, uh, what more can we tell you about that? So I guess the other thing we haven't mentioned is it's a systems-based practice. So every month we go through a new topic. Um, we're doing GYN and 
kind of some derm we're, we're going into as well. July was orthotrauma, big topic. Um, uh, October is always peds month. I always remember that because of Halloween. Um, and so we, uh, we go through the topic by the month and we discuss all those things. Uh, we also touch on ECGs every month, um, radiology, wound care, ock med, uh, emotional intelligence, m and grand rounds, um, all that, all that good stuff. We have it all outlined and it, it flows pretty well. What percentage of your applicants get accepted for the fellowship? Ooh, Lizzie, Maggie, do you guys have those numbers? Come on, that's a rough number. Um, yeah, that's actually probably something anything. we need to have ready for Dr. Radford. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we're going to get on that one. Um, I, want, I don't actually, I don't want to put a number on that. Don't quote me. <laughs> um, all right, I'm skipping over it. Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> if you make it to the interview stage, I can say with fair confidence, Maggie and uh, Lizzie are really good at helping you guys out to get to that stage. If you get to that stage, our accepted or offer rate after interview is very high. It's probably like 90%. Yeah, it's, def it's definitely in the 90s for sure. Mm -hmm. Maggie and I are the gatekeepers, so. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we'll give you some tips and tricks. Yeah. <laughs> How soon um, can we apply before graduation? Uh, I'm in May 2023. Apply as soon as you'd like. We are rolling basis. We love an early sign because <laughs> um, it makes it really easy for us to plan, you know, where we're going to put our fellows. So if you're interested in the fellowship, you want to get the ball rolling, uh, you know, reach out to us, send us your CV. We'll get you on the calendar for a call and we'll move forward from there. We'd love to talk to you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, really good question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lizzie, going back real quick, I don't want it to get lost. Is there a schedule somewhere that outlines the coursework with an exam schedule or and just a general outline of what a year would look like? Um, you guys can go ahead and answer, follow up on that, but I do know that me and Lizzie do share with you guys just a general overview of the course outline. So that's definitely something we could share with candidates that are interested, but um, Nick, Martin, and Liz, you guys but, might want to. And just so you, everyone knows, Exam schedule is literally pre-test and, and one at the end. So there's just <laughs> like the first week and the second to last week are the only tests. But everything else is just, you know, doing the work, being an active participant in our Wednesday uh, didactic. But I would actually kind of to touch back on somebody's question from earlier about kind of what we expect from you guys is, well, now is a unique company and we're always trying to improve things. And that includes our fellowship. And therefore, what we like to say is the only thing that stays the same is change uh, as we try to improve things. Um, so uh, willingness to understand why change is happening and roll with that, that's a huge uh, component of being successful in our company. Um, and so our fellowship structure we're outlining to you, it's very much exactly how it is today. Um, but uh, perhaps when you start in six months, maybe we've added something or maybe we've taken something away because we see it's not working. Uh, so that's something you can expect as well. And also, um, if you guys wanna, you know, uh, be in contact with us, talk, uh, talk a little bit more about the program, uh, Maggie and I will send out an email to everybody who's attending tonight just so you have our contact information uh, and we can share some more information about the program if you don't already have it. Yeah. Um, all right. We're going to start wrapping it up here. Well, I we think need to cover. There is an important the, question there. Yeah, I was going to. Yeah, go so ahead. Robert, I do see your question. I see you. I hear you. Yes. Uh, that's an excellent <laughs> question. He asked about uh, being with preceptors or support in the clinic. So for phase one through three, uh, you're always going to be there with another, uh, with a mentor or faculty, so you're not alone. Uh, but then like Martin said, uh, phase four, as we lovingly call the audition phase, um, you you can be alone, but it depends. So it's going to vary by state and uh, volume. So, but phase four, like you're really kind of counted on, um, like you're, quite, you're almost a core provider. So if it was a clinic that needed two providers, you would be that second provider. If it was a clinic that ran alone, then you might be there alone part of the shift, the entire shift. It would depend. But in those first three phases, you're with someone. Mm -hmm. And you're never, you might be physically alone, but you're never emotionally alone. <laughs> <laughs> At least not when you're in clinic. I can't help you outside of clinic, but. 
unless philosophically she means we have a very extensive soup doc support system <laughs> as well as the fellowship leaders are always available as well uh lynn yeah. our, we're open seven days a week therefore fellowship is seven days a week yeah. <laughs> can you tell yeah. us what the requirement is for like weekends and stuff nick yeah, uh, we touched on a little bit earlier, but I said it really quickly. It's about every other weekend you can expect if you're someone who needs every Saturday or every Sunday off for um, a specific region, often uh, religion, we are able to help accommodate that uh, in the sense of if you need every Sunday off, we would probably schedule you most Saturdays. Is there anything else um, any, of you, any of you panelists can think to just mention or something we missed that would be important information i think we covered pretty much everything everyone's uh, asking how do we apply so that's a great question <laughs> <laughs> obviously prime information for both you and us um so there's a couple ways you can apply you can apply on our well on our well now website um you can apply on indeed if you find our posting you can also just uh you know, reach out to us, send us your resume, and we will get you on the calendar for a quick phone call and kind of start the process uh, of interviewing. Yeah. Um, sorry, Lynn, let me clarify. So you can work any of the seven days of the week. You will not be working every day of the of the week. We, we do believe in a work-life balance. Uh, so you can expect to have three to four shifts a week. Uh, depending on the day off that you request, as well as Wednesday morning. Um, some weeks will feel heavier than others. This is a good one. I like this one. <laughs> what qualities do you look for in a fellow or a teammate? Ooh, me, me, me. <laughs> oh, she's going to throw things out, but you first, Ooh. Martin. Martin, can um, you also share your requirement for your fellows uh, yeah, when sure, you're done? Yeah. It, it kind of goes hand in hand. So um, <laughs> I really think the biggest piece to being successful in the fellowship is enthusiasm. And when you're in clinic, um, you know, it's it's just a natural thing. Our core providers are going to be better mentors to you, be more apt to drag you into interesting cases, be more apt to show you things, tell you little pearls, share their uh, wisdom with you if you're enthusiastic and excited to be there. Um, that I think that's really part of what the culture that we have and that we're trying to build as well that we you know i've had a lot of jobs where i wasn't excited about going into work but this is not one of them that i think most of our um providers aren't aren't uh, aren't bemoaning the fact that they have work today um so being enthusiastic being ready to to show up and, and get your hands dirty and and be involved in patient care is i think the most important thing um it's taken some of my fellows that really did probably have a knowledge gap coming straight out of school and caught them up far faster than they than most of their peers because they were enthusiastic because they were they were coming in ready for their shifts um, as far as what Lizzie was um, getting at my customer service is, is is all brought together at the end of my visits with patients where I tell them to be well now um, and so you have to come up with your own little shtick to make patients excited and to make the days go by and have more fun. Mm -hmm. Makes me happy every time I hear it. <laughs> yeah, the well now pun is strong in this group. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go next before you steal my answers, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I have two things that I hope I steal Nick's. Um, I agree with Martin. Uh, but so I would say uh, flex flexibility and initiative. Um, I would hope that would go without saying. I know you heard it going into school uh, that seriously, you get out of this what you put into this. Uh, you are adults. We are not going to be at your home making sure you're doing those readings. Sure, we notice who is ready on Wednesday morning um, and all those other things. Like Martin said, you can really see who throws themselves into it and catches up. And that is so much fun for us to see. In case you can't tell, we're all a little dorky. Like, we love that. That's why we're here. Um, but really, it's initiative and what you put into it and then being flexible because you never know what you're going to see. But I think, but that doesn't work without Martin said, oh, I'm mirrored. Martin, over there. You're to my left. Right, Martin. <laughs> Go ahead, Nick. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I was going to say just kind of be a good human. That's it. We, we like good humans. We can work with anything else. Mm -hmm. Very true. 
Uh, you guys had really good questions tonight. I'm really good. Yeah. Anything else before we uh, put this on YouTube for to be forever seen? For anyone who is <laughs> in the New York, Albany, Capital Region, we are ah. holding a awesome concerts and careers event on Friday, August 26th. We are going to meet up at our well, local well-known clinic site in Saratoga Springs. Uh, from there, we're going to stop in at Hattie's and have, you know, uh, a drink and some appetizers, kind of talk a little bit about the program. And then we're going to the Chris Stapleton concert at Saratoga Performing Arts Center. So uh, anyone um, who is Lizzie, nobody calls it that, it's SPAC. You're okay, so I wanted to spell out the acronym for everyone who <laughs> may not be from here. <laughs> um, but yeah, if anyone's interested and has yet to sign up, we'd love to have you. So uh, just please reach out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Christina's ready. <laughs> I yeah. talked to Christina the other day and we had the best conversation and I'm super excited to meet her in person. <laughs> I'm getting my cowboy boots ready. <laughs> Christina, they are as crazy as they seem. So you have, <laughs> you will have a good time. <laughs> I am so excited. I can't wait. Lizzie, you're everything I thought you were going to be in person. So. <laughs> <laughs> I actually also um, reached out to Rhonda D'Agostino and I was like, listen, I met Christina. I'm really excited. <laughs> Send us more of your students as well. <laughs> oh, wait, you got referred through Marisa? No, Rhonda D'Agostino, um, oh. the head of her program. Yeah. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Because Marisa's last name is D'Agostino as well. Yeah, yeah. And I spread the word. I got some of the SUNY Poly students on board too. So I think some people signed up for you as well. This is this is our future NP in training, by the way. I'm sorry that we're both on camera. Now. I love that. Oh, no, we, there's no rules for, well, there are rules for Zoom. Let's not go crazy. But family <laughs> and pets are definitely allowed. Usually expected, <laughs> expected on the calls. <laughs> yeah, dogs, uh, <laughs> children. Yeah, it's all a little disappointed. There's no pets on tonight, but yeah, uh, mine is in doggy prison currently. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Well, thanks everybody for taking the time to jump on this call. I hope it was super informative. Um, and insightful into the program. Thanks, um, Nick, Liz, and Martin, and Lizzie for walking us Logan through everything. We got a dog. There's Logan's dog. <laughs> yes. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> it was a, a poodle of some. Oh. oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> He's so confused. <laughs> He's like, I did not sign up for this. I was just watching my stories and napping. <laughs> but that's, I think that's it for for us so thanks for we taking the time forward. everybody we look forward to meeting you guys please yeah reach and out. don't be afraid to reach out yeah i keep waving to your daughter christina she just keeps waving i'll keep waving back christina, we saying bye bye <laughs> i muted her but she's just trying to say goodbye to everyone I her. what's her name this is hadley hadley Hi. nice to meet you hadley. nice to meet you Hi. <laughs> thanks for joining us hadley yeah, we can't wait for so you good. to work in it well now, too. Class yeah, of uh, 2050, right yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have, Have a good, good night. night. Bye. Bye, guys.